let's go ahead and begin by talking about how CSS actually works. We have learned about the terminology used when we're speaking of CSS. We also um, have reviewed some XHTML markup, and now you know how XHTML creates the structural hierarchy of the tags. And basically, it's, remember, going to create the backend structure of the web page. The CSS is going to go ahead and allow you to control the layout and the appearance on screen of the various elements that you're using in your web page. It's going to go ahead and control the presentation of your web page. So we're going to start by doing that. There are three ways to style your document using CSS. Inline, embedded, and linked style sheets. The one that you'll be using most often is probably linked style sheets and we're going to get into that in a later movie, but we're going to go ahead and discuss all three because in certain situations you'll want to know what all three are and perhaps use them to solve a certain issue that you may be having. Basically, inline styles are also known as local styles and they're added to a specific tag using the XHTML style attribute. So let's go ahead and do that. Here is the code for this particular page. This page is showing in my browser. It doesn't have any formatting. And we looked at this page before, so I've stripped away all of the styles. And basically, we're going to use some CSS to be able to control it. So we're going to start by going ahead and controlling or styling our H2 tag, which is right here. I'm just going to throw a couple returns in here to separate this H2 tag so you can clearly see what I'm talking about. And that's fine in your HTML. You can put as many returns or you know open spaces as you want to keep things organized. So that makes HTML really nice. I'm going to click inside the H2 tag, and I'm going to go ahead and start by creating an inline style. You create the inline style by typing out the style tag. Now you may notice as soon as I start typing, I get this little contextual menu that pops up. Basically, this is Dreamweaver's way of helping you write CSS, and this is why I find Dreamweaver to be a great tool, even if you're going to be doing hand coding, because it does offer this contextual menu that gives you tips, and you can choose to ignore it and just type your own thing, or you can choose to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, control the font family, and you can see as soon as I start to type font, it brings up a list in the contextual menu. I'm going to go ahead and select font family, and it goes ahead and adds font family and a colon, so it's waiting for me to put the value for font family. Um, you can choose to put spaces in here if you like, if that makes it easier, and I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and type Georgia for the font family, and then I'm going to go ahead and terminate, terminate this statement with a semicolon. That is good practice, and you should always do that. So basically, I'm telling the H2 tag to now use the font family of Georgia. Generally, it is good practice to give another option just in case the person's system does not have the font that you're requesting. So I'm going to go ahead and put comma and just to keep things simple I'll just write serif. So it's going to look for Georgia. If that is not available it'll go ahead and substitute with the default serif font that is on their system. So we're not going to see too much of a change if I save my file and preview it in the browser. I'm going to go ahead and right click and reload the page. You can see that this did change slightly but by default, the text is using the default serif font on my system, which is Times. So you may notice that Georgia does, in fact, look different than Times down here, but it's not really, you know, too pronounced. So let's go ahead and let's add another declaration. And in turn, we'll be creating a declaration box. I'm going to click to the right of the semicolon. I'm going to hit Space. And then I'm going to go ahead and define color and you can see that little contextual menu is popping up. I know the hex value of the color that I want to use so I will go ahead and type that in. When you're using CSS you always have to write the hash mark in front of the hex value so that's really important. You will have problems in a variety of the browsers if you do not use this the uh, hash mark so make sure you put that in and of course I want to terminate the statement with a semicolon if I save my file and open it in the browser once again and reload the page you'll notice that now this h2 tag turns blue 
Now this is the only tang that was affected by my inline style and the reason is is because inline styles are really very similar to like using the font tag in old you know HTML styling. Their scope is very restricted. An inline style affects only the tag to which it is attached. Let's go ahead and create one more inline style and then we'll discuss them a little bit uh, more in depth. I'm going to come here and I'm just going to put some returns in between my paragraph tag. We'll go ahead and we'll style this paragraph tag right here. So once again, I'm going to click to the right of the P tag right there. And let's go ahead and let's just assign a font face. So, oops, I need to write style there first. So space, style, and it opens up with the quotation marks waiting for me. I'm gonna go ahead and use font family like we did before. And I can choose to use this list that Dreamweaver provides or I can just type. I'm gonna go ahead and just type Verdana, um, comma, and then I'll just go ahead and type in San Serif because that's what I want to be my um, substitute in case uh, the um, Verdana is not available. And Verdana should be basically loaded on just about anyone's system. So that should be something that's going to happen for us regardless um, whether it's there or not. And then of course, just like we did before, I need to terminate my declaration with a semicolon, which I'm going to do. And let's go ahead and let's also add a color here. So I'm going to put space, I'll add color, colon, and I'm just going to go ahead and make my color like a light gray so we can see that this is happening. And I'll terminate with a semicolon. Dreamweaver does help you, but it doesn't add everything in. So you are going to have to pay attention to what you're doing so that you can ensure that you're writing in the appropriate, um, you know, additional characters that Dreamweaver ignores. If I right click and hit reload again on the page, you can see how this paragraph now changes to be this light gray and it also changes font face. It is now showing in Verdana or a sans serif type font. None of the other paragraphs or H2 tags are affected on my web page and that's because of inline styles. So basically, as I mentioned before, when using inline styles, the scope is very restricted the inline style affects the tag to which it is attached and that is all. Using inline styles is simply another way of putting presentational markup directly in the tags. As I mentioned, it's very similar just to using font tags in the days before CSS. Generally, you'll probably want to avoid inline styles, although there are certain instances where they may be useful. One of those might be if you want to override a style in just one specific instance and there's no better way to do it, you could create an inline style and not feel too guilty about it. Um, most situations, you can almost always avoid using inline styles by using an ID or a class, which we'll cover in a later movie, um, and then style them in your external style sheet. But every once in a while it may be easier to create an inline style and that's absolutely fine. Inline styles win out over styles that you define with embedded style sheets. So they will have more control and that basically has to do a little bit with the cascade. Inline styles are closer to the particular tag so they will trump um, an external embedded style or an external style sheet. And we'll talk more about the cascade a little bit later on once we understand a little bit more about how CSS works. So this is an example of inline styles.